Okay, so uh, over here we will be putting the uh, we'll be putting the cost after calculation. So let's just go through this again. They say display the cost of services including the discount, including discount if the cost of services including tax is more than eight hundred pounds. Okay, so if the cost over here, the question sounds quite confusing. But basically over here, what they're saying is if the cost with tax is more than 800 pounds, there is a discount that has to be given. How much of discount is mentioned over here? So over here, they have said if it is more than 800 pounds, a 15% discount should be given. Okay. And then the question paper goes on to tell if there is no discount available, that means if it is not more than 800, we should, we should put zero there for the discount amount. We should put zero. Okay. Zero should appear in the cell. Okay. So we will be using, so this might be confusing. I'll uh, explain it to you uh, with the best of my ability on how to answer this question. Okay, so over here, we are supposed to display the final price. And the condition is, if this value is more than 800 pounds, we will be giving them a 15% discount. So we have to display the price after the 15% discount. If it is not more than 800 pounds, then we will be giving them no discount, which basically means zero discount, okay? Right, so over here, we put the cursor over here and we will be using a function call because question paper specifically mentioned, use a function, okay? So we will be using a function called the if function, okay? So the if function will basically be checking what is the value over here and if it is above 800, what to do? Otherwise, what to do? If it is less than 800, what to do, okay? So we will be using something called the if function. So we come over here and insert a function and we will be searching for the if function. So we say go. And over here, the if function is, so what are we testing? What is our logical test? Okay, so logically we are testing whether this value, whatever value is over here, whatever value is in F10 is greater than 800. Okay, this is what we are checking. We are checking whether F10, the value in F10 is greater than 800. Then the computer is asking us, okay, if it is true, if it is more than 800, what do you want us to do? So if it is true, if it is more than 800, we will be giving it a 15% discount, okay? So what we will be doing is, we will be taking the cost, okay? We will be taking the cost and subtracting it with the cost times 15%, okay? Now this is mathematics, okay? If it is true, we have to give it a 15% discount. If it is more than 800, we have to give it a 15% discount. So how do we calculate that discount? We take the cost, subtract it with, the cost times 15%, which is why I took the cost minus open brackets, the cost times 15%. Now you can type 15% over here, or like I can normally recommend, refer to the cell. Don't type the value, refer to the cell. So I'll be telling my computer, I, I'm, I have clicked over here, okay? While I'm inside this, go to the details worksheet and take the value that is over here. Is it clear guys? I have told my computer, F10 minus F10 times whatever value is in the details worksheet in cell E14. Whatever value is there, take that value. Okay, and do not forget to close the bracket. If it is false, if it is false, the discount is zero. Okay, if it is false means it is not more than 800, then discount is zero. We do not give it any discount. Okay, so then what we do is we will take the whole cost, we will take the cost and subtract it by zero. Okay, we will take the total cost and subtract it by zero, which means there will be no reduction at all. Okay, and we say, okay. Now, since this is more than 800, since this is more than 800, there has been a 15% discount. Okay, so after the discount, this is the total that the client will be play, uh, paying. Okay, so I hope it makes sense to you. We have used the if function for this. Okay, right. So with that, we have come to the end of this activity as well, okay? In task uh, B1C, in task B1C, there's some formatting that needs to be done, okay? So uh, just let me just uh, show you this. So over here, it says <clears throat> format the client's worksheet so that currency value show the currency symbol with two decimal places, okay? So wherever, uh, currency values are, we have to put the currency symbol, which is the pound symbol, and it should be to two decimal places, okay? So over here, these are all currency values, okay? All of these are currency values, so we very simply come and click over here and uh, take the pound symbol. This is one, this is the easiest way. 
Another way of doing it is you can simply right click and you can come to format cells. Okay, and then tell your computer you want the number to be, I mean, these values are going to be a currency. Okay, we do not want the uh, dollar symbol, we want the pound symbol. So we'll have to scroll down, scroll to English United Kingdom. Okay, decimal places two, and then we click on, okay, this is the second way of doing it. Okay, right. The next thing, uh, did they say it has to be done to both worksheets or just one? So they said just the four clients worksheet. Okay. The total cost of services, including discounts, is formatted to make it stand out from all other monetary amounts. Uh, is formatted to make it stand out from all other monetary amounts. Okay, the total cost should stand out from the other values. Okay, so this should stand out from all the other monetary values. Okay, so let's make it bold. Let's make it slightly bigger, maybe. Okay. Now this appears as hashtag because the cell is not wide enough to display all the values. I'm just going to double click and make it wide enough. Okay, so this definitely stand, stands out from the other values. Then it goes on to say, all data should be visible. All data is visible. So uh, for example, this is not, so I'm going to double click over here so that it auto adjusts. But when it auto adjusts, what happens is it's going out of the printing area. Let's make it slightly smaller. Let's make it a lot smaller because these, these, this text is visible. Okay. Length in meters. Let's make it slightly bigger. Okay. That looks better. Cost. Okay. So everything is now visible. The next thing it says is the row and column headings and the page footer are displayed when printed. Okay. So the row and column headings. Okay. So they're talking about a, B, C, D, one, two, three. These have to be visible in your printout. Now, let me just show you right now, when you go into print and when you come into print preview, this is a print free preview. You can see the header and footer is visible, but the column and row headings are not visible. A, B, C, one, two, three is not visible. Okay. So we have to make them visible as well. So we come into page layout. We have the column headings. Right now, they are only view. Okay. Right now, we can only see them, but they do not appear in the printout. So we are going to tick this box and say, print them as well okay so now when you come to print preview you can see it also shows a b c d one two three as well okay uh, the next thing it goes on to say is save the spreadsheet as task b1 okay so you can use a shortcut key f12 however if you are on your laptop the f12 key might have a different function so you may have to press fn f12 do check that okay so f12 is a shortcut key for save as and i'm going to be saving this as task b1 and we say, okay. It says print a client's worksheet in landscape showing the values on one side of A4. So we are supposed to print this in landscape. So let's come into the page layout. And right now orientation is in portrait, okay? So let's change this to landscape, okay? And then we have to print this. So let's select our cells, okay? Control P, shortcut key for print. Okay, make sure it's properly fitting one A4 paper. Okay, very important. And then you can click on print. The next thing the past paper tells us is display the formula view and ensure all functions and formula are displayed without truncation and will print on no more than two sides of A4. So right now we can only see the values. No, now they want us to show the formulas. So we come into formulas and we say show formulas. Now the moment you do this, the cells become bigger than needed. Okay, so instead of manually adjusting each of them, you just come and click over here, all the cells get selected. Then you come to one of the columns, okay, and get the symbol that allows you to resize it, get that symbol, and then just double click on one of the columns, automatically all the other columns will auto adjust, will auto fit. Okay, watch this, I just double click, automatically all the other columns auto fit it. Okay. Once again, this is too big. This column is too big. Let's make it smaller. Oh, but the problem is the information is not getting shown. Uh, so they told us it should be maximum two pages. Let's see if it's fitting into two pages. Control P. And this information is going correctly into two pages. So not a problem. As you can see, it's into two pages. So not a problem because the past paper allows us to go up to two pages. Over here, it says no more than two sides of A4. Print the client's worksheet in landscape showing the functions and formula. So you have to go ahead and print this. Okay. Right. 
So with this, we have come to the end of task B1 as well. Okay. Let's move on to task B2. Okay. So in a task B2, they say Mehdi wants to see the cost for size two gardens. Filter the details worksheet to show only the cost for size two gardens. So we have to only show the cost for size two. All the others should be hidden. So I'm going to go back into normal view. I'm going to switch off formula view and go back to normal view. So let's come to formulas and click on this button again. Okay, so now it goes back into normal view. And uh, oh, 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 oh. we are supposed to be dealing with which one? Details worksheet, sorry. We are supposed to be working with the details worksheet. So let's go into the details worksheet. And what we'll do is we're going to put a filter. We're going to put a filter for these headings. Okay, so let's come to the home tab and let's say we want a filter. Okay, so now using, now can you see these white color arrows have appeared here? Button arrows like. So these are filters. These will allow us to hide the data that we do not want to see. Okay, so I come to what I only want to see size two. I only want to see size two. So what I'll do is uh, I'll click over here and I'll say I don't want everything to be visible. I want only size two to be visible. And I click on OK. So now you can see only size two is visible. If you want to clear these filters, you just click over here and say clear filters. Okay. Right. So then it says display only the data for garden size reference and both cost columns. Garden size reference and both cost columns, which means size range we do not need. Okay. Only this column, this column, and this column should be shown. Okay. So I'm going to hide this column. Okay. So I'm going to select this column. Can you see how I selected it? I clicked. Then right click and simply say hide it. Okay, so now that column has been hidden. You can see A, B is hidden, C, D. Okay, if you ever want to unhide that column, keep your cursor between A and C. Keep your cursor between A and C. Right click and say unhide. B will be unhidden. Okay, but for now I want it to be hidden, so I'm gonna right. Sorry, I'm gonna right click and say right click and say hide. Okay. Then it says save the spreadsheet as task B2, print the details worksheet showing the values. Okay, so let's save this as task B2. You can use a shortcut key F12. We save this as task B2. And we are supposed to print this. So select your data, control P. And you can go ahead and print this. Okay, right. So uh, in our next video, we will move on to task B3 where we have to create a chart. And then we have one final activity of answering some questions. And thereafter, I thought uh, I thought spreadsheet was the last questions, but apparently there's also a word processing question coming up thereafter, okay? So in the next video, we'll finish these two activities in spreadsheet, and then we'll move on to the word processing activity, okay? See you in the next video.